Hello, welcome to another edition of The Green Zone. I'm Anita Maltbia, and it's good to have you with us today. Today we're talking about healthy bodies. And of course, when you talk about a healthy body, you have to concern yourself with what you put in that body. So specifically, healthy foods. I work in the green impact zone, and that particular area is what is known as a food desert which just means that we have very few outlets to uh, access food, and particularly fresh fruits and vegetables. So we wanted to have with us today some people who could talk to us about not only healthy food, but how we can make our own healthy food. And I'm really pleased to have with us today, Saste Mosley. Hello. Welcome. Hello, thank you very much. Thank All right, you. it's good to have you here. Uh, how is it, before we really talk about our subject, how is it that a young man like you is so interested in urban farming and gardening? Uh, well, I, uh, I grew up in uh, the Ivanhoe neighborhood, and right next door to me is a gentleman that had chickens and rabbits, and he planted a farm every uh, uh, year. So I grew up. Uh, being around that, it just seemed natural. Uh, so that was uh, how my childhood uh, started uh, with the farming. Okay, and I understand that you are a longtime Ivanhoe neighborhood resident. Right, I've been there since I was five and uh, I've come back home and uh, uh, purchased my mom's house and we've taken that green and uh, I've my mom was a block captain for about 25 years. I've seen the work that Ivanhoe has done since I was a child, really. And it's been going in a real positive direction. All right, so co community engagement just comes to you second nature. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's natural just being out there, the paint program, uh, getting out, cleaning up the neighborhood, the block watches, that's all seemed to be a part of of uh, what I've carried with me as I've uh, moved around uh, the country and my community support. All right, well, what we wanted to speak with you today specifically about is your work with an organization called Green Acres. Uh, tell us something about Green Acres, will you? Okay, uh, Green Acres, uh, we uh, do a farm on 27th and Prospect, and we do our own farming and we get uh, organic, healthy food out to the residents uh, uh, in that food desert. Uh, we also work as an umbrella organization. If someone else wants to farm, uh, we take them out on a tour, show them all the um, urban farms of, uh, available in the inner city. We also connect them with consultants. There are a lot of people that are assigned to this area, a lot of consultants. We put them uh, directly in contact with those people that help them with their planning. And the last thing we do is uh, we uh, use some of the stimulus workers and actually get labor out to the different sites uh, to make it a lot easier from somebody who has an interest to actually develop it into a, a, pr a production farm. Okay, so, you know, some of us use the term urban gardening and then the term urban farming almost interchangeably, right, but right. there's a difference, isn't there? Right. Uh, uh, the garden, when people think of a garden, they think more of a quality of life issue, something that you do when you get off work or on the weekends. Uh, we uh, are dealing with a farm because a farm is a business and businesses hire people, creates jobs. And when you're in an economically devastated area, if you don't address the needs of the people, you're not going to get any community uh, support and any community involvement. So we took the approach of actually getting into a farm. Uh, the farm addresses their needs. It also uh, makes a big difference uh, is that farms get a lot of subsidies. They get a lot of support. Uh, the farmers, uh, uh, by doing a farm, we actually bring money into the community, whereas a garden is more, uh, has, doesn't have that business type approach and that uh, uh, overall support. Okay, so 
Uh, an individual then might be interested in just raising food for themselves, their family, right. maybe some neighbors. Right. There's also the option then I hear you saying to do urban farming whereby you plan to sell some of your produce. Exactly. And um, with all the changes going on in, in the city uh, with the population, now we've got more land, about 24% of the land is available for use and the, uh, the joblessness is there. So it makes sense to use the land, use the people that you have. We're working tightly with the um, uh, city officials to actually change the ordinances so that an individual can grow food, actually hire some people to assist them, and actually sell the food uh, at their home location. And uh, right now, you're just limited to growing food and taking it and vending it out at different market sites. Okay. Um, I think I remember in a prior conversation that you and I had that you also have urban farming uh, in another city in your, in your work experience. Did you tell me that? Yes, yes. I, uh, I, way back in uh, 1993, a guy named... Uh, Will Allen started doing some urban farming uh, up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, that uh, has brought him to the point now where he, I think he actually uh, helped uh, with uh, uh, Barack Obama's garden uh, at the White House. So um, he has been working on that, attacking this, uh, this food desert. I, I helped actually work in the kitchen. We had some cold issues in the kitchen, so we put the ceiling in there. We also had a food market, a uh, health food market. We purchased uh, items from him uh, to be a distributor. So these are the uh, type of ways you can actually get involved with your actual food supply. We did that in Milwaukee. And as the program started growing, we wanted to get in contact with uh, farmers uh, down south. So I actually moved down south for about a year and did some large-scale farming with an independent Christian community uh, down in Alabama. Oh, fabulous. Uh, very committed then to this whole issue of fresh foods. Yeah, I, um, um, I look at the food, taking control of your food supply as being a way to uh, uh, count for me to make a change. I worked a lot in the uh, uh, for the government and I worked a lot in the nuclear power industry and in the military uh, uh, as an electrical engineer and now to actually uh, get back back into the dirt and uh, get part of this green movement, reduce our energy costs, have food made locally so we don't have to transport it and have it uh, fresher. It's a whole different way of applying my engineering skills and I get to do it right here in my home. All right, well, you uh, participated in our March 27th zone-wide event mm -hmm. uh, that the Green Impact Zone put on at Paseo High School yes, yes. and uh, had a great demonstration for us uh, about gardening and, and uh, farming. Right and what that entails. And one of our reasons for having asked Green Acres to participate uh, was that we want young people mm -hmm. to realize that they can be a part of their own food production, mm -hmm. uh, the importance of fresh and healthy foods. Right. And so do you think that that is a viable way to reach them or what other ways have you used to reach out to the young? Yeah, we, we've had to adapt the way we communicate about the farming. Uh, the, the young people, they know what a side order is, you know, but they don't know what a bushel is, you know. They, uh, they know what a, a, a serving is, but they don't know what an acre is. So we have to actually use their language. If I put one seed in the ground and I get 20 side orders, they know that's $20 mm -hmm. that I got from just sticking that in there and protecting it. And I can do that over and over again. So we've had to adapt how we communicate with them, uh, put it in the language of the food desert. They have side orders. They have, uh, when they go to their grocery store uh, in the inner city, 
uh, they don't, they think groceries is milk and eggs and bread uh, and uh, candy and pop. Mm -hmm. So we can't talk about groceries with them. We have to actually talk, uh, talk to them. Uh, we can't talk about entrees. We gotta talk about the language that they know. If we tell them about corn, you know, they're used to corn coming in a half of a, a half of a stick mm -hmm. piece of corn. That's how big a piece of corn is. So we've had to study how they communicate, look on the web uh, uh, at this past event. Um, uh, Mr. R R Rashi Nuri came in and he is so uh, grassroots and down to earth and He's uh, got all his information on the internet and you can watch his videos and you can actually hear, listen to radio shows of them. So that's really how they are communicating. And we've had to uh, adapt our team to be able to communicate them with them, you know, where they are. All right, and he was very appreciative of the help that Green Acres gave to him. He came in from Atlanta uh, to participate, but Green Acres was the local organization that helped to make his presentation good. Uh, so we really appreciate your being here with us today. And uh, is there a, a website or anything that you would like to give out? Well, I'll, I'll give out uh, uh, my uh, uh, website. is uh, uh, my email address. It's um, Saste Mosley at East Meets West of Truth. WS. The easiest way to get to us is just Google uh, Saste Mosley, S-A-S-T-E-H-M-O-S-L-E-Y, -E and then all my website information will come up. Um, uh, and our address is 3118 Prospect. Uh, you can stop by between 9 and 5 any day. Leave us a message. It's kind of like a farm. If we're out in the field, just leave us a message and we'll come by and pick it up. Well, that's fabulous. And uh, Rashid Nuri's website is trulylivingwell.com. Mm -hmm. uh, so we would encourage people to check that out. Yes, yes. Well, Saste, I really appreciate you being with us today. And we're looking forward to spreading the word about healthy eating. Okay. All right. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'm pleased to have with me someone that I've known for a long time. I'm happy to welcome Myra Harper. Hi. How are you? I am wonderful. Good. And it is a pleasure Thank you. to be here. Thank you. Good to have you. Uh, Myra has been um, preparing wonderful, healthy, tasty meals for a lot of years, long before it became as interesting and popular as it is becoming now. And so we wanted to have her to join us here on the Green Zone to uh, talk to us about preparing healthy foods and eating healthy. So Myra, let me start out by asking you, uh, why is it important to eat healthy? Well, uh, let me just say this uh, starting off, that 85% of good health is what you eat. Mm. And so that makes it very critical. Uh, food is responsible for many, all of the processes in the body. If you don't feed the body properly, then you end up uh, facing diseases or dealing with diseases. Uh, also, food provides the strength and the nourishment for people who are in good health that are, uh, you know, that perform. Uh, food also is responsible for um, reducing the risk of disease, and that is by eating properly, then it sets up the stage for the body to heal. Oh, makes sense. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall, uh, good, when you provide good food for the body, you strengthen the body, you, you provide it with a healthy environment, and then also, if you eat right, you can eliminate obesity. Ah. Okay. So the opposite of that would be if you don't eat right, yeah. guess what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can expect for right. the pounds to come. That's right. Okay. Well, one of the things that you hear people say often is, I don't have time to do all of that cooking, all of that preparation with fresh food, raw food. What, what's the answer for those people? The answer is that you have to make a choice. 
And, and when you do make that choice, you will find that it can be very uh, easy and also inexpensive ah. to cook fresh food and to cook what I call whole foods. Those are the kind of foods that you that people want to eat. Mm -hmm. And you can do that by pre-preparing or prepping food. Take one day uh, a week mm -hmm. and do all of your prep. Always uh, have a schedule of menus uh, for the week. Mm -hmm. And all of this, as I talk about it, is about planning. Okay. and making better choices and having a plan uh, there that you can follow. So you, you're going to have, you're going to know what you're going to eat every day. Okay. And on one day, you're going to do all of your pre-prep prep of your snacks and of your uh, uh, time-consuming foods. And you can uh, portion them out and store them. All right. And then take them and you know, prepare them each, each day. And in a lot of instances, uh, what you can do is, let's say you pre-prepare your uh, protein, your chicken or your fish, and then just before you get ready to eat it, just steam some veggies. And right there you have a meal. You have a meal. Absolutely. Okay. Now I can attest to the value of that and how well that works. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to be honest and say I fall off the wagon. Yes. Uh, but I would say to people that if you sometimes are not able to do that, don't give up on it totally. Absolutely. Right? And you yeah. can always kind of gradually fade into it. Mm -hmm. The key thing that you want to do, if you're really, really interested in making that change, is you can start out uh, doing some of the foods that you buy at the grocery store mm -hmm. and then slowly phase into uh prepping and cooking and preparing the whole foods that you really want to eventually end up consuming 100% uh, of the time. The key to that, though, is knowing what to get at the grocery store, because the grocery store can be an unbelievable maze of all kinds of things that are whispering to you saying, oh, take me home with you. Mm -hmm. And as you pick it up and take it with you, you are also taking extra thighs and extra <laughs> around the middle. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's a lot of myths out there and a lot of confusion as to what should I eat or not eat. Well, that's exactly my next question. When we go to the grocery store, what should we be getting? Well, this is the key. Read every nutri nutritional label and understand what that label is saying to you. Uh, the key uh, for uh, uh, the nutritional label is to look at how many calories, how many calories from fat, how much sodium, uh, how many carbs, how many proteins, how much fiber, because all of those things are part of the day-to-day uh, -day, um, ingredients that you need in order to maintain health. So you want to make sure that as you read that label, like you may pick up a package that says, hey, I'm low in fat. Mm -hmm. And then you turn on the back and you see it's loaded with saturated fats. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to read and you have to understand mm -hmm. because there's so much misinformation out there uh, on labeling. And, and that's because we live in a society that is about making money. So people will and every all these companies know that people are really interested in wanting to eat healthier. So they use the buzzwords. Mm -hmm. No sugar low in fat. So anytime there's a claim there, if there's no sugar, then there's, it's high in something else. And so as you begin to uh, read the label, and any label that has ingredients that are too hard for you to pronounce or understand, you definitely don't want to eat that. Right. That's probably a <laughs> chemical. Of some Absolutely sort. it is a chemical. Okay. And a lot of our foods, and the reason why our foods are loaded with chemicals is because they're preservatives. Ah. And in order for, for, for uh, somebody to make it in somewhere and manufacture it or put it together somewhere and then get it to you and then have it set on the shelf maybe 10, 15, 30 days before you pick it up, mm -hmm. then they've got to preserve it. I see. Right. And so that is one of the key things that you want to stay away from, processed foods, because they're full of preservatives. Okay. Uh, canned goods. Mm -hmm. There's an inner lining in cans now that has a lot of um, uh, chemicals that are carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. 
And so if uh, food is sitting in a can, and usually if it's uh, canned food, it has been overcooked. So basically you're just chewing. There's no nutrition there. Canned foods, unless it's canned beans, canned foods, uh, processed foods,